the average person out there, mm -hmm. right? Let's let's think about that avatar. So they are overweight or obese. So they have excessive adiposity fat. And would you agree they're probably under muscled due to the sedentary lifestyle that they're leaving living and mm -hmm. perhaps not completely optimizing protein? Yeah. Right. So where do we where do we start <laughs> if we're thinking about setting up that person's kind of nutritional framework and and before we get into the actual practicalities of that perhaps emphasize you know what what's the problem with a suboptimal body composition how is that affecting our health or risk of chronic disease why do we actually want to work on this in the first place okay so there's functional um issues and metabolic issues with for example, just, just looking at the muscle mass side of things, being under muscled. So the, the reason why we would want to focus on increasing and preserving muscle mass and strength, especially as, as people advance in age, is because muscle preserves metabolic fu function, muscle mass. A lot of the, the, the good stuff that happens within the engine of the body happens within muscle tissue as far as fuel use, fuel partitioning, energy use, all that. Um, the building of strength would cover the neuromuscular side that makes us functional, that prevents falls, prevents uh, you know the, the complications of, of falls later in life. And so you need both of those things. So in order to achieve both of those things, you need proper nutrition, uh, holistically, not just protein wise, but protein and energy and uh, essential nutrition, good food selection and all of that stuff. Uh, so that's why it is just, it's so important. And if you collect body fat in excess, then this can actually, well, it, it antagonize, antagonizes health in a number of ways, but, um, when you carry excess body fat, this can actually impair the process of increasing and preserving muscle as well. And the roots of that are probably, as far as we, we can hypothesize, the roots of that are in a chronic inflammation type of state. Okay, so let's imagine there's someone sitting here with us now <laughs> and they, they want to lose body fat they've listened to everything we've spoken about so far and they they have a pretty good grip on where they're going to set their protein intake at a high level understanding that resistance training is going to be important we haven't really deep dived that let's just put that to the side yeah that might even be another episode <laughs> right uh but they want to lose weight so how how important is it for them to think about the energy within their diet and how do they how do they begin that process Oh man, it's tough. It's tough. At, at, at a very simplistic level, people have to understand that no matter what your food selection is, I mean, you can choose the, the most heralded superfoods on the planet. You can choose the, the, the foods with the most accolades and, and the most hype behind them as being the healthiest possible foods. But people have to understand that unless you are burning more calories than taking in over time, you're not going to lose body weight. Um, and so if people understand that from the outset, then they have this vague idea that, okay, I can't eat an unlimited amount of these in quotes, healthy foods. There has to be some sort of checks and balances system on there for me to eat a certain amount. Now this can be done purposely or it can be done by default, but people have to realize when I'm consuming more protein, I'm doing it because I'm trying to increase satiety and control hunger. When I'm consuming more, let's say unrefined plant foods to get fiber, I'm doing that not just for the various health reasons, but also that will default me to eating fewer calories because I'll be more satiated. That stuff will displace the energy dense type of junk foods that I would have been eating. And at the end of the day, at the end of the week, 
it helps me eat less. And so there are hyper quantitative and precise ways that you can eat fewer calories per day or per week, or there are just a little bit more qualitative ways to do it by eating more of certain foods and less of other foods with the understanding that I'm trying to eat fewer calories by the end of the week. It's totally okay to know that this is a calorie game. And it's totally okay to know for the more sophisticated folks, I'm really trying to lose body fat while hanging on to as much lean mass as possible. Hey friends, the scientific evidence on lifestyle habits that lead to longevity is clear. Now it's time to put this knowledge into action. I'm excited to announce the Living Proof Longevity Challenge, a 12-week program to build evidence-based lifestyle habits to optimize longevity. My team and I have transformed over hundreds of hours of conversations with experts on aging, nutrition, and exercise into a life-changing 12-week program that will challenge you to develop habits that lead to a longer, better life. This is a unique opportunity to gather health data about yourself that has the potential to change your life for the better. You'll start by testing 10 longevity biomarkers that tell the truth about where your longevity stands right now, today. Following that, you'll get a personalized longevity score to guide your 12 weeks of habit building that will boost your score and improve your biomarkers for the better. After the challenge, you'll retest your 10 biomarkers and see the proof of how powerful these science-backed habits really are. Head over to theproof.com forward slash living proof to download your zero cost copy of the Living Proof Longevity Challenge today. That's theproof.com forward slash living proof. Look forward to joining you on this journey. All right, so there's a couple of different paths you can kind of go down. Yeah. Depending on your personality, I guess. Yeah. What's going to help you adhere to this best? Uh, is there a rate of weight loss that we're looking for that you would say is safest or the most effective is it possible that if you're losing weight too quickly that that could have a negative effect yeah this has actually been looked at um, by garth and colleagues who compared a 1.4 percent drop per week in body weight with a 0.7 percent drop per week in body weight and so you know if you do the math on that with it's going to be like a Oh, roughly uh, two ish pounds, two, three pound drop with like one to two ish pound drop per week. Um, well, more like, yeah, more, more like one pound, two, two pounds versus one pound ish. So the rapid loss versus a, a slower loss. And the slower loss in this particular population who were athletes, who were lean athletes, they preserved more lean body mass with the slower rate of weight loss. Um, I did a review paper with, with some colleagues like almost nine years ago now, where we issued the recommendation of limiting weight loss to 0.5 to 1.0% of your total body weight per week. And this was within the context of preserving a maximal amount of muscle tissue while losing fat in the contest prep context. And that actually does apply to the general population as well. Um, I think that getting down to a very simplistic heuristic with this, most people would want to keep their weight loss to one to two pounds a week. And viewing one to two pounds a week as actually fast weight loss is, is a healthy thing to do. Because I mean, if you can imagine 50 to 100 pounds lost a, a, a year, is is tremendous so um even though in the literature it kind of comes down to this 0.5 to 1.0 percent of total body weight loss per week i think we can even focus a little bit more on the on the lower end of that half a percent of total body weight per week is perfectly fine and in some of the literature it shows that quick weight loss at the beginning in the obese population is correlated with greater Weight loss and weight loss maintenance in the long term, I still think that if we look at it in terms of percentages like that, you probably, most people probably wouldn't want to lose more than 1% of their total body weight per week as a goal. That's as aggressive as you need to go. Mm -hmm.